Hi. Today, I am going to talk about a very interesting poem, a poem which I love a lot, written by the famous American poet Walt Whitman. The title of the poem is The Voice of the Rain. This poem primarily looks into a very common and well-known natural phenomenon called water cycle. We all have studied what is water cycle from our earliest school days itself. How water vapor goes up, takes new shape and comes back as rain. This cyclic process is called water cycle. To put it in a very uh, brief way. When you read the poem by Walt Whitman, The Voice of the Rain, you may think, why should Whitman write a poem just about a common phenomenon? And why an advanced class of students are studying a poem like The Voice of the Rain. First of all, this poem, when you come to the last two lines, shows you where the core message of the poem is or I would say that is the pivotal area of the underlying philosophy in this poem. That's what makes this poem outstanding. Let me ask a few things to make you think. There was a Zen Buddhist master who was getting ready to start teaching his students. Like every day, it's a daily routine. The teacher comes to the class students open the book the teacher may introduce the lesson and lesson starts children would be usually conditioned and tuned that oh next chapter previous chapter is over now we will learn the next chapter now this is a conditioning that most learners carry that they can predict what's going to happen in a class to some extent so if a teacher breaks that predictability of a classroom situation it becomes a memorable interesting and a creative class so the zen buddhist master came to the class and students naturally got ready They must have taken their books out and pen ready because the teacher would speak. They may take down some notes. For a few minutes, he just kept quiet in the classroom. This is something unusual for students. He told them, leave your books for some time. Keep quiet. So they all kept quiet.
he asked them can you listen to the birds from the trees so they all paid attention and some of them got excited saying yes sir i could hear somebody said i heard a crow someone said i heard a nightingale the teacher said are you ready for today's class they said yes today's class is over that was today's class listening to nature this suddenly awakened the students awakening is a very important thing in learning it is swami vivekananda who says books are of no use to us books are of no use to us unless our own book opens the inner book if it is not ready if it's not open you don't learn what whitman's poem look at the title the voice of the rain it is not noise of the rain it's not a disturbing sound it is nature's melody if you are ready to listen to it with a lot of receptivity every noise becomes a voice have you ever had a conversation with nature have you ever talked to trees have you ever talked to birds rain river to talk to nature to converse with nature to listen to nature you need to be very sensitive you know to be creative the most important and essential ingredient is sensitivity never confuse sensitivity never confuse sensitivity with sentimentality sentimentality makes you weak and immature sensitivity makes you creative matured and more evolved more compassionate we live in a world where talking to a river talking to rain or a tree would be considered absurd and insane because our communications and conversations are always utility oriented what will i get if i converse with somebody everything is so commercial so that is the point where walt whitman is taking us to a pure space a sensitive and creative space where he is telling us I have heard the voice of the rain. I asked the rain, who are you? And you know, quite unusual, quite surprising that rain gave me an answer. What did rain tell him? Rain did not say I am the product of the earth. product is a very commercial term rain said i am the poem of the earth what a beautiful poetic line 
not over whitman comes with a more powerful line it is hereby translated i am going to translate what rain told me what does he mean by that to communicate with the nature you need a different language and that language may not be known to everyone that is the language of sensitivity he says you may not understand that language unless you are sensitive so i am translating it for you how, how beautiful then he describes the water cycle in the poem again the last two lines of the poem he takes the whole concept to a great and higher level he says a song also takes birth similarly what does he mean see if you look at creation and creative activities or most of the activities in nature they are cyclic in nature they are not linear even our life is quite cyclic in nature whitman is telling us look at rain it is the poem of the earth how does it take birth it takes birth from the earth nobody knows when the water vapors go to the sky it is invisible phenomenon we have never seen it but it is happening every now and then it goes to the sky takes a new shape but basically it is water and comes down in the form of rain it doesn't just come and fall on the earth it makes the earth beautiful it purifies the earth seeds which are latent they sprout flowers bloom so rain gives so much to its origin now what is that master stroke of whitman in the poem listen carefully whitman says when i look at water cycle in nature i realize the same cyclic process goes on in me when i write poetry how is that listen a poet or an artist gets inspiration from his surroundings from the life around him from this world can you see that inspiration coming into the mind of the poet no it's an invisible phenomenon like the water vapors going to the sky so when an inspiration comes into the mind of a poet or an artist it takes a new shape there an idea combined with imagination craft takes a new shape comes back to life to people 
to everything around in the form of art, poetry, music, literature, philosophy, science, whatever. Even scientific inventions. So when it comes back to life, it beautifies this earth. Don't you agree that poetry beautifies this earth? Don't you agree that music purifies this earth? Don't you agree that scientific inventions have made this life more beautiful? What a brilliant comparison of water cycle with creative cycle. Never miss this. So if you are sensitive enough, if you have less prejudice and more openness, if you are ready to grow within this nature, this life has so many melodies for you, so many miracles for you. But are we listening or not? Very few people are sensitive to that extent that they live every moment with nature, with the beautiful things of life. A musician doesn't create music out of thin air. He has inspiration. There was a very popular and brilliant Malayalam movie called Magnifying Glass. In Malayalam it is titled Bhuda Kannadi. Where a father who is very much worried about the safety and security of daughters in a strange society expresses his apprehensions, his worries. But he is basically a watch repairer. He uses magnifying glass when he does his job. Brilliant metaphor the writer used. I'm telling you this for a reason. The director of this movie is also the person who wrote the screenplay. None other than a great filmmaker, Sri Lohita Das. In one of his interviews, he was asked, how did you get this concept in your mind? You know, he told, one morning, while he was looking at the front page of a newspaper, he could see the picture of a girl who was molested and killed. And there was a picture of her books scattered on the road her tiffin box open, only that much, highly symbolic photograph. He says it disturbed him, it haunted him a lot. It's a very sensitive person. It haunted him for days together. So after some days, maybe a few weeks later, on a rainy evening, He had to suddenly take shelter somewhere. He didn't have an umbrella. So a shop he got into in his village. That was a watch repairer's shop. So the watch repairer asked him to sit. And he was engaged in his work with the magnifying glass. While talking to him, 
Once he looked at him with the magnifying glass on. For a moment, the writer thought, what would be my image in his eyes now? How will I look when seen through magnifying glass? He says, I went home and in few days that girl's photograph the symbolic photograph and this character combined in my mind it took shape as a father and a daughter and it became a brilliant movie that newspaper everybody would have read Lots of people would have seen a watch repairer using magnifying glass, but only few draw inspiration. And that inspiration is unseen. When it came back as a movie, we all watched it. It enlightened us. How an art is born? Walt Whitman's poem, My Dear Children, should not be just a poem for answering questions in the examination. I would request all of you to feel the poem, learn it in such a way that you are awakened forever. This earth is never without poetry, without music. Our world, human society needs more poets, more musicians, more painters, artists, actors, philosophers, great scientists. Thank you.